This video is a quick demonstration of a new feature of the software, the Lesson Player. So I'm going to run uh, a prototype beta version of the IOLab software that's not yet available, but it will be soon. If we give this information, it's in debug mode still. Okay, so let me shrink the window so that I can see the movie recording over on the right-hand side of what I'm actually doing with the IOLab. And uh, so let's start the lesson. We select the folder the way we would if we were going to uh, recall an old acquisition, but there's now a new tab here that says Lesson List, where all the lessons I've created are shown, and there's this one right now called Lesson Demonstration. So I select that, and now you'll see that uh, a slide appears with Next and Previous buttons, and this is now the control the student has. They can click Next or Previous to move through the lesson forwards or backwards. Uh, but basically the control of their device and the data acquisition is now in the player, not with the student. So let's click Next. Uh, first thing here, it asks them a question. So the lesson player has the ability to present multiple choice questions as well as text boxes. And it, it asks me for a displacement as shown in the top here, which of these uh, velocities would uh, match it. And so I'm just going to give the wrong answer with a bad explanation. So we can move on, and let me make sure that my IOLab device is actually turned on here. There we go. I could tell it wasn't because this wasn't lit up here a second ago. Now I'm on, so when I click Next, uh, the system is able to turn on the IOLab. I didn't do this myself. I didn't have to click on Record. This was all under System Control. You'll also notice it's only displaying the displacement plot as a function of time, nothing else. That's also under System Control, and it's asking me to make the displacement plot looked like the thing on the left here, so let me just try that. I'm going to roll the thing to the left, to the right, halfway back, and then halfway back. There we go. I didn't do a very good job. Uh, <clears throat> and when I, you'll notice I click next, the system stopped the acquisition. It's now telling me to zoom in on the thing that I just did, so let me do that. I'm clicking on zoom. I'm going to go over here and select that region. That's what the, um, the position as a function of time looks like. Uh, when I click next, the system has superimposed now the velocity as a function of time on that. Again, that happened under the control of the lesson. And I see that the one that looks most like the green is in fact A. And now I have to explain this and I just want to make a bad explanation to move on. But all of this is under the control of the player. Now you'll notice that the system is turned on again so now the student can play around and examine the relationship between velocity and acceleration. I'm sorry, displacement and velocity, both are being shown uh, to the heart's content. The student, if they want, can stop and start the acquisition themselves as they're exploring. Okay, so that's all good. Uh, when the student is happy, they click Next, and they go on to the second part of the lesson. You'll notice I'm, I've hidden the chart over here. It's telling the student what they're about to do. They're going to roll the thing to the right and back to the starting point at the left, and it even says how to do it, get a book, put the book up against the thing. Well, we don't have a book handy, so I'm just going to use this IOLab box and start that right there. Uh, next, here we go. It's telling me what to do now. I'm going to roll it to the right, and then I'm going to roll it back to the left. Then I'm going to click next, because I am finished. Okay, so now let's zoom in on the thing that I just did. So there we go. That's the thing that I just made. So the student can certainly do the same thing. Now it's asking me about the total area here, and it looks like this positive one and this negative one is about the same. So I'm going to say the total area will be about zero. And again, I'm not going to type a really good explanation because I don't have time. Now it's going to tell me how to actually analyze the area. So let's select the analysis tool. Then I'm going to drag the mouse over the plot to select the whole area, and I'm going to measure uh, what the area is, and it's going to tell me how to do that here. It says the area is the thing that's shown b beside the A, and I see that it in fact is zero. Boy, I was right. The area was close to zero, and it even explains why. There's a positive piece and a negative piece that cancel each other. So that's the lesson. Um, <clears throat> now it says it suggests some other things that I can do. I can play around. That's an important part of the lesson. And then finally, the lesson is finished. 